Hi there. Today I'm going to show you a little bit about the way that I work through uh, different resources to create connections between them, just as part of the way that I think about reading and taking notes while I'm reading. And I'll, I'll try to demonstrate some of the ideas that I have around uh, why I, I think about doing, doing my work this way. So uh, let's, let's have a look. Right, this is a press release that I came across a little while ago. Um, I use a service called Hypothesis to make notes while I'm reading uh, articles on the web. This is a press release from Stanford Medicine. Uh, title is Researchers Say the Use of Artificial Intelligence in Medicine Raises Ethical Questions. No kidding. Um, so what we do is, uh, I have this little Hypothesis bookmark up here. Hypothesis is a social annotation service that you can install that runs in your browser. And uh, what it does is it adds this cool little uh, sidebar here. You can see that I've been working through this article, making notes, and with every note that, or with every highlight that I've made, um, I've, I've added an annotation. So this is kind of the way that I think about reading. I, I read... I approach reading as a conversation with the author. And so here I've, I've made a note to, to link this idea that I've come across in this press release with this book uh, called More From Less by Andrew McAfee. Now, what I'm doing is I'm, I'm creating relationships between these concepts. Um, and sometimes those relationships are not real. In other words, you know, I've, I've created a link to this book and uh, it may be that there's a, a strong connection there, but it, it may not be. So that, that'll come a little bit later. But the idea is that as I'm reading, um, you can see um, the, the annotation changes here. I'll go to show all. As I'm reading, I'm making notes and kind of engaging with the, uh, uh, the authors through a dialogue. Now, a little bit earlier today, I came across this um, uh, uh, segment of text and I, I started, uh, I realized that there was a concept that I was kind of familiar with, but I, I couldn't really put my finger on it. Um, the, the concern that this author is making here is talking about the idea of withholding information from electric, electronic records because it's kind of going to be a requirement in terms of training AI algorithms or machine learning algorithms. Um, that they have patient data available. So, it you know if you're not really interested in machine learning and artificial intelligence, it, it doesn't really matter. I'm just using that as an example to to do a demonstration here. But I started making a comment here on why the author may be wrong um, about that assertion, and the idea is that um, we we don't actually need to uh, aggregate patient data into these massive silos and databases for um, training machine learning models, and I started making a note here. I've said there's some work being done on federated data analysis where the algorithm works on decentralized data. Now, I knew that federated was one of the uh, the words, but I couldn't really remember. I knew it wasn't federated data analysis. So I go to my um, uh, personal learning environment. I'm, I'm not quite sure what to call this at the moment. I'm calling it knowledge notes, but these are my permanent notes that I mentioned in a, a previous video. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to search for federated and I see the first result that comes up here is federated learning. So I click on that and I'm in edit mode. So let me go to preview mode. You can see that it's linked to machine learning and it's uh, federated learning is linked to all these other things. And I do a quick look here. I say that it's a machine learning model where the, the model is brought to the data source rather than taking the data to the model. And I so obviously, this makes exact um, uh, sense for, for what I'm talking about in this article. So I'm going to change this federated data analysis to federated learning, where the algorithm works on decentralized data that um, stays in place with the um, patient and the ML model is brought to the patient so that the data remains private. I'm going to say machine learning as the tag, federated learning, artificial intelligence, data analysis. I think that's enough and we'll post that to public. 
Now, what I will eventually do, um, I'm not going to do it now, just in the interest of time, but I'm going to take all of these excerpts from the uh, from the article plus my notes, and I'm going to add that to Zotero. So in Zotero, I'm going to say um, my notes. Actually, I might as well just do. I'll do a very quick thing here. I'll just copy and paste all of that and I'll put it here. You can see it's messed up some of the formatting, but that's okay. I'll go back a little bit later and I'll um, I'll sort that out. So now I've got a resource. I've got my notes um, uh, associated with that. I also know that this, this press release is linked to this article. This is the article that they're actually talking about in that press release. And I can see that I've read it and if I open the PDF, I can see that I've actually made annotations. So what I'll do now is I go to this and I say extract annotations. You can see a Zot file is working through the article, extracting the annotations and the highlights that I made previously. And you'll see it's created a new note. And this is the note uh, that is now in Zotero, so it's uh, fully searchable and it's got the uh, exact um, uh, location in the PDF where it's pulled out the text. So what I'm, you can see that what I'm starting to do is I'm building relationships between this press release, this article, um, I'm starting to generate responses to these authors where now I'm gonna add uh, federated learning as a keyword to um, this piece because I want to make the point that I'll add another note. So I'm going to say that patient privacy with ML models may not be as big a problem as anticipated because of federated learning approaches to ML training. Okay. But now what I need to do is I, I need to go back to my uh, note um, about federated learning. And I see that this is looking a little bit light. And so what I need to do is I need to expand that note with a little bit more detail. So this is a search that I did. I just searched for federated learning, um, just a, a very simple Google search. I'm not looking to become an expert in federated learning. I really just want an overview. Um, AI Med is a website that I come to relatively often and uh, I find the information uh, pretty useful. So that came up. I know that NVIDIA is a massive um, proponent of AI and machine learning, um, especially mach training machine learning on the NVIDIA processes. So this seems to be a resource that I'm going to pay attention to. The Wik Wikipedia article probably has a little bit too much um, specific detail about federated learning that I'm not really going to pay me too much attention to, but there may be a few uh, concepts that I'm going to pull out. And then I'm not quite sure about these other two articles. Um, this one looks like it might be good. I see a few other ideas here, generative adversarial networks that I'm interested in and few shot learning. I know that my notes in um, Obsidian, let's just have a look here for few shot learning. Also very limited note. So if I, if I look at this article and uh, some of the links on the side there, this seems to be something that I might want to pay a little bit more attention to. So let me just have a quick look here. See what this video looks like. Helps if I press play. Uh, that guy looks a little bit like that guy. Yeah, I think that's the same guy. So already I'm thinking uh, if he's on the NVIDIA website and he's giving an interview, he's at King's College London. Um, I'll probably pay attention to what he has to say. Yep, there's the same name. So when I start working through these very short articles on federated learning, I'm going to pull up the hypothesis uh, plugin. 
can see I'm logged in. Um, and now I'm going to start working through these articles. If I decide that the articles are going to be useful for my uh, uh, my knowledge base, I'm just going to hit the Zotero plugin up here. And we go back to Zotero and we see it's pulled in the information. It hasn't included the, the author name of the blog post. But uh, I'll add that information a little bit later. And so what I can do now is I'll start going through some of this. And now I can start making notes. So you can see that the combination of Zotero and um, Obsidian allows me to iteratively work through resources that I think might be valuable to pull out concepts um, and, and include them in my permanent notes. But as part of that process, as I'm reading, I'm also making notes, not only highlighting, but also creating annotations where I can expand my understanding of what's being written and engage in a, in a bit of an interaction with the author where I can either provide contrasting information or I can agree, I can support, I can find other relationships um, over here with, uh, uh, with uh, other resources. I pull all of that into Zotero. I establish the relationships or the beginnings of the relationships in the notes and the tags in Zotero. Um, but ultimately, the goal is that I want to pull information here into my permanent notes. And what I'll do is, as this, as this note on federated learning expands and gets bigger, I'll eventually start splitting it up into smaller notes as it becomes... Um, uh, um, too much to to be included in in one of these notes. The the point of these notes is that they should be atomic, which is they they should only include a very a very small idea. So that's it. That's uh, just a very brief overview of uh, the way that I work with resources, trying to go from uh, reading an article to making notes to identifying relationships to doing a bit more research, uh, pulling in a few more resources, and then eventually bringing the, those ideas into my permanent notes. All right, uh, I hope that's been useful. Um, if you think that you might like uh, other videos that are uh, similar to this, please consider subscribing, and I'll see you next time. Cheers, bye.